I know you guys are going to have a lot to say down in the comments below, but I'm going to ask you to refrain from commenting until the end of this video, and then you can say whatever you want. That is a 1985 Chevy K10 pickup. We call it Big Green, and today we're going to find out if it's cool or if it's crap. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Tough on the job, easy on the buck. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. The third generation Chevy K10 pickup was produced from 1973 all the way up until 1987. And in that time, GM managed to sell millions of these pickup trucks, making it actually one of the most popular trucks ever sold. There are a lot of really cool things about the K10 pickup, but there's also some things that kind of make it a bit crap. Under the hood of a Chevy K10 could be one of six different engines that were offered in the third generation, so I got my notebook to tell you all about them. Uh, the first was a 250 cubic inch straight six with a single barrel carb. Then there was the 262 cubic inch V6 with a four barrel carb. Next up was the 305 cubic inch V8 with a two or four barrel carb. They changed it partway through production. Then there was the 350 cubic inch V8, which is probably one of the most popular engine choices for the K10. Uh, but there was also a 379 cubic inch diesel V8, which is a pretty interesting option, as well as for only two production years, 75 and 76, a 400 cubic inch V8 uh, with a four barrel carb, which is a pretty cool engine. But what's under the hood of this K10 is actually not the stock engine. You see, it used to have a 305 cubic inch V8, but that only made 160 horsepower from the factory and up here at altitude, frankly, it was a bit of a boat anchor. Chevy fortunately gave us this, which is a ZZ6 crate performance engine. This one is throttle body fuel injected and makes about 400 horsepower, which is pretty great. The next logical thing to talk about would be the transmission. And there were actually four different transmissions available on the K10 in the square body generation, which had a 15 year production run. So the first was a three speed manual transmission called the M15. Then there was a three speed automatic and a four speed automatic. And then this, which is the SM465 four speed manual, which is frankly, a bulletproof transmission. I mean, this thing can just go on forever. You're never gonna kill it. Uh, it has a granny gear and then one, two, and three. Plus, because this is a K10, you know it's a four x four, which means it has a low range transfer case. Time to talk about axles. So from 1973 up until 1979, the Chevy K10 came with a Dana 44 in the front and a 12 bolt corporate, which just means like GM's in-house unit axle in the rear. But in 1980, they kind of changed things around because this 85 Chevy K10 has a 10 bolt in the front and a 10 bolt in the rear, which maybe isn't quite as robust as the Dana 44 and 12 bolt, but it's still pretty, pretty damn strong. And you're going to have a hard time doing anything bad to these diffs. Of course, the other important thing about Big Green's front axle is that it has these manually locking hubs. So all you have to do is hop out, lock the hubs. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Come on the job, easy on the block. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. The K10 square body is beloved by many for very good reason, but that's not to say that it doesn't come with its fair share of problems that actually make it kind of a pain in the ass. And the first one is back under the hood here. Take a look right there and you'll find the steering box. Now the main issue with the steering box is that it's quite prone to cracking at the mounts and then actually falling off, uh, which is really catastrophic for your steering system. So that's kind of the first major issue you run into with these K10s. Unfortunately on the K10, the engine isn't the only thing you need to keep lubricated because these hood hinges actually have a tendency to freeze up. And when they do that, you can bend the hood when you try and close it because these will just lock in place. The next problem area on the square body K10 is actually the door hinges, which have a real tendency to wear out. What ends up happening is that you have to really slam them shut. Unfortunately, at this point in the 80s, Chevy still had not quite figured out how to protect from corrosion. And these K10s have a real tendency to rust, especially in the fenders. As you can see here on the other side and a couple other places around the truck, we have little spots of rust here and there, but you definitely have to keep an eye out for rust. The rear end of the frames on the square body K10s are another area of concern because near the cross members and the shock braces, there's actually a tendency for the frame to crack. So, 
you're going to go buy one, make sure you take a look underneath here and see that the frame is actually all in one piece. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to just weld on a piece of steel and kind of fix it, but you do want to be careful for it. So the K10 has what are called side saddle gas tanks, which is actually pretty cool because there's one on each side of the bed. There's two big problems with side saddle tanks, and the first happens when you go to the gas pump. See, you gotta pull up on one side of the gas pump, right? But Big Green is such a big truck, as are most K10s, that you can't actually get the hose around to the other side. So what you have to do is you have to park on one side, fill up one tank, and then turn around and fill up the other tank, which is kind of a pain. Now the other issue <laughs> is that GM might have had some slight problems with side collisions having to do with these side saddle tanks. You see, in the 80s, GM was sued a number of times because people claimed that these side saddle tanks were prone to exploding in a side impact collision, which there has been some debate about the legitimacy of these claims, but certainly it's an area of concern. Up until 1980, you could actually get your K10 with a wooden bed which was kind of a cool aesthetic touch, but there was one big issue in that the wooden beds tended to rot really badly. Fortunately, Big Green here has a good old fashioned steel bed with this rubber bed mat, so we're not too worried about any wood rotting back here. Most of you guys probably know this generation of K10 as the square body for a very good reason. It's because the design is pretty distinctive, but what's interesting is that Chevy, or GM rather, actually called this the rounded line when they introduced it. And there's a couple interesting reasons they did that. The reason that GM called it the rounded line actually has a lot to do with the design of the cab. You see the window has this round curve up here, the top of the cab is rounded, the whole door is rounded, and for that reason, GM decided to call it the rounded line. Now, obviously, the name rounded line has not stuck with the square body K10 pickup. And the reason they call it the square body is pretty obvious because the front is like a giant square. But it's really cool actually, the K10 was one of the first pickups to be developed in a wind tunnel, which is why it has this really raked windshield, these cool shoulder lines that run down the side of the vehicle, and for its time, it was actually a really revolutionary design. While we're talking about design, we have to talk about beds because there's two bed styles you can get with the square body K10. The first is called the flat side, which is what Big Green has, and it's pretty obvious because the whole side is flat, but perhaps the more popular choice by enthusiasts is called the step side, which had a big step right here. But they kind of take two different approaches to pick up beds. You see, the step side looked really cool, but you ended up having a narrower bed as a result. So if you wanted a work truck like Big Green, the flat side was the way to go because it gave you a much wider bed. Big Green being a work truck not only has a wide bed because it's a flat side, but it also has a long eight foot bed, which just means you can fit pretty much anything you want back here. It's amazingly capable. Now, back in the 80s, it was pretty common for pickup trucks and a lot of cars to have not one, but two different keys. And Big Green is no different. It has this round key, which does the door locks like you just saw, but the square key is the important one, which actually starts the vehicle. Once you've unlocked the door, you can begin the process of getting into Big Green, which basically requires a resume of having played on an NBA team at some point, uh, because Big Green is up there. So I just kind of, you know, muscle my way up here, and uh, then you're in, which brings us to the interior. The interior on the K10 can best be described as functional, because there's not anything crazy going on in here, but it all just kind of works. The first thing I want to talk about is the bench seat, which is a pretty common thing for trucks to have, but here on a manual K10, you better know the person sitting in the middle pretty well because you're going to be getting real close to their legs. Uh, but you can fit three people if you have to. The next interesting thing about the K10 is the steering wheel. Like a lot of things in the 80s that didn't quite have airbags yet, it has this really thin little steering wheel that totally gets the job done, but is just kind of funny compared to how big and beefy the rest of Big Green is. Chevys from this era have kind of a weird key mechanism because you can't actually pull the key out without pressing this little button right here. Once you press that in this weird kind of three-fingered maneuver, then you can remove the key. Being from the 80s, Big Green does still come with some pretty nice amenities. For example, this air conditioning, which still blows very cold. The other nice thing about this bench is that you can fold it forward, revealing actually a pretty big storage area for things like jumper cables or maybe a shotgun or a rifle or something like that. Fun fact, the Chevy K10 actually came with rubber floor mats from BMW from the factory. This is a factory option. 
Obviously, Big Green is not a stock Chevy K10, nor has it been for a long time. You see, Chevy gave us that ZZ6 crate engine that we hooked up with some Magnaflow exhaust, thanks to both of those guys. Plus, we gave it throttle body fuel injection, and it's on a very basic but effective block lift. But I think this actually proves that the K10 is really cool because there's so many different things you can do to it. It's been around for such a long time and Chevy made so many of them that the aftermarket for parts is huge and there's a lot of different ways to customize it. Don't bring on the road. Bring on the road. Bring on the road. You got the good. You got the good. Get up and go. I don't think I'm alone when I say that the K10's design is one of the things that actually makes it really, really cool. There's something about it that's just simple enough, but just purposeful enough that makes you think, damn, that truck does some good work. And it really can, you know, it can tow 6,500 pounds, which for 1985 is pretty good. Obviously compared to a modern truck, that's not that much. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Tough on the job. Easy on the buck, nothing works like a Chevy truck. 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 The K-Series from Chevy is actually a truck of many firsts. And there's three important ones I want to point out. And the first one is right here. It's actually one of the first trucks to come with passenger side mirrors, which seems like kind of a novel thing these days, but back in the 70s and 80s, you were not necessarily guaranteed to have a passenger side mirror. The next first actually doesn't have to do with the K10, but rather the K30, which is the one-ton version of the K-Series. And the K30 was one of the first trucks to be offered as a dually. You get a package called the Big Dually, spelled D-O-O-L-E-Y, and there you go, the first dually. Now the third first is that it was one of the first trucks to be designed in a wind tunnel, which I kind of talked about earlier. In case you couldn't have already guessed, Big Green drives like a pickup truck from the 1980s. Nothing special there, but what is kind of special about Big Green, or actually what's kind of cool about Big Green, is that it just makes you feel like a badass, I'm not gonna lie. The shifter has these awesome long throws that just make you feel like you're driving a big semi. I mean, the other cool thing is that engine, right? The noise is just so good. I mean, there's a couple things that kind of suck, right? The block lift is very basic, and as a result, Big Green is bumpy as hell. But you just don't care. You have this awesome commanding driving position. You can see everything. There's no real A or B pillars to speak of because it's 1985, so visibility is amazing. Uh, and Big Green just makes you feel like everything is going right. The Chevy K10, is it cool or is it crap? Well, I want you guys to finally tell me down in the comments below what you think, but I think it's a really cool truck. The design, the functionality, the way it looks, the way it feels, it's just a cool truck. Yeah, sure, it has some problems, but frankly, they're all pretty easy to get around if you just take care of your truck properly. For the Fast Lane Truck, I'm Mike Curtis. Please be sure to come back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real world cool or crap reviews just like this one. Could Big Green not be cool? It's a monster! Oh my god.